The game featured two coaches and programs who were no strangers to success. Coach Larry Karras Raiders had more playoff wins, 28, than any Division III team, while legendary coach John Gallardi, St. John Johnny's, had 25 overall postseason victories. In addition, since the 90 season, Mount Union and St. John's ranked one and two in all of Division III in victories, with 133 and 110 wins, respectively. The Purple Raiders scored on their first possession, a near flawless eight play, 62 yard drive. For Mount Union. And that goes to Moore right up the gut, another first down. Smack rolling right, nowhere to go, and he finds on the cutback in the middle of the field, Rob Sondles, his wide receiver. First and goal Raiders, eight yard line. Smack looks to throw, look. Roll, rolling to the right, throws on the run, back of the end zone, Ergang caught it, and touchdown! There's that Ergang guy again with another huge play! On my first drive, I took what was there, and I hit the backs out of the backfield, I think, hit Chuck and Dan maybe four times out of the backfield, and just took what was there. And we just went right down and scored, and it was a great feeling. Lineman, who does call his own plays, decides to go to his own back, Chris Moore. Run out third and long, rolling left, Lineman has some time, wants a deep ball all the way down the middle, up for grabs, tipped, and it is intercepted by Greenleaf! Returns to the 45 of Mount Union, gets a block, he turned around and upended at the 48-yard line. Last play was a game of nine, so was second and one. Smack looking to pass, throws against his body, and fouls, finds who else? But Adam Marino. St. John's defense tightened and its offense eventually answered with a one yard dive for a score late in the second quarter. Short drop, batted down at the line, trying to swing it out there to Forcell and in there to knock it down, Todd Braden. Lineman fakes the draw, sets up, throws again, deep left side. This one's for Elliott at the goal line, batted away and almost picked off. He'll turn, hand off, it's Moore around the left side. He walks into the end zone for the St. John's touchdown. The teams enter their respective locker rooms as they began, tied 7-7 at the half. The second half amounted to a fierce battle of field possession as both defenses dug in for the long haul with big plays and numerous punts being the order of the day. Backs are split, second down nine. Lineman fakes the draw, back to throw. Looks left, throws left, intercepted by Grinch. He's to the 35, 40, 45, 50, and down at the St. John's 45-yard line. Three straight games. In a way that, that did epitomize the way our defense was playing that day, that you know, we have to keep setting up our offense. Our offense is awesome. They're gonna break out of it one of these times. They're gonna get it in there. The Raiders eventually took control in the fourth quarter, only to fall short on a pair of scoring opportunities. 7-7 seven, seven tie, tight right formation. Speck hands off, it's Pew, he's out to the 10. He's got his head down to the five, and a penalty oh. marker down as Pew is upended near the four. Holding on the offense. It'll still be first down after 10 yard penalty. Left hash to break this tie. Gaylord will hold. Good snap and spot. Kick block. Ball rolling around. Picked up by Sheenus. It's a pile up at the 25. The Johnnies grab the ball and they're down to the 28 yard line. No idea who blocked it. It doesn't matter. Mount Union is turned away. Mount Union's defense would not get frustrated, would not budge, would not allow St. John's offensive unit any glimmer of hope on this rainy December day in Salem. Third down 10 from their own 34. Raiders have extra defensive backs in. Letterman st uh, straight drop. He, he had the ball knocked away. It's a fumble and he falls on it. All the way back at the 29. Matt Campbell came by and knocked the ball loose. The purple and white forced St. John's to punt for a stag bowl record ninth time giving the Raider offense its final possession of the day. What followed was a gut check 11 play, 65 yard drive, highlighted by the most important kick in Mount Union history. I think I came in the huddle and like, all right fellas, I think I've thrown enough interceptions for the day. Just, you know, try to calm everybody down, everybody just chuckled. And just went out there and we knew we could do it, it just a matter of executing. Smack will throw, looks, sets up, throws near side, it's caught, Marino turns the field to the 15, down inside St. John's territory, the market of the 49. And everybody on their feet at Salem Stadium. Split backs, third and long, Smack to drop, looks, sets.
Sets up, throws over the middle. Marino got it for a first down at the 20 yard line. I think if you look at any game that we've played in the last few years, when we needed a pass completion, the ball was directed toward Adam Marino. First down, goal to go for the national championship. Offset eye are the backs there, few and more. Speck will turn, handoff, Chuck Moore up the middle, he's to the five, he's inside the five, down close to the three-yard line before yeah, they get him stopped. 21 seconds, clock is running. And Gary Speck looking to Larry Karras with one timeout left. Now Sheena steps it off for the third time. Four seconds left in a tie game for the national championship. Snap, spot, kick on the way, it is good! One second, one second to play in Mount Union. 28th annual Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl was a classic. The Purple Raiders had been put to the test by a formidable St. John's team and through the will of a champion had found a way to succeed. The defense wins championships. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that we could not have won that game without that outstanding defensive performance. And I think the changes that we made, you know, paved the way for that last game. Mount Union, with an amazing 68 wins in its last 69 games played, had achieved what no other Division III program could claim, a fifth national championship. <laughs>